So let's 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 let the car talk a minute. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Ooh, here's our favorite little turn. Hang on, Polo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Greetings, automotive enthusiasts. Today we have for you a very special car. This is my 1979 Capri RS Turbo. This was the first year for the Fox body. Uh, this car is a very special car uh, because my very first car I bought in high school was a 79 Capri RS. It wasn't the turbo. Uh, and of course, when I was a kid, I was always wishing like, man, I wish I had the turbo. But uh, yeah, I'll tell you more stories uh, about the, me and the history of this car uh, uh, when we go in the drive. But for right now, come on in and I'll give you a little tour and a walk around with the car here. Come on in. So this here is a one owner survivor car. Uh, this car has 64,000 miles on it. Like I said, one owner and it's an all original survivor. Yeah, I would speculate that it's probably one of the nicest, uh, it's probably one of, if not the nicest surviving 79 Capri RS turbo, uh, you know, with original, it's completely original paint, uh, interior, everything pretty much a true meaning of the survivor. The only thing done to the car is it has reproduction, uh, metric 390 wheels, and talk more about those wheels later. But uh, I got the original TRX wheels with tires. Um, but as you know, tires are very hard to come by and very expensive if you're familiar with the TRX Michelins and Coker does reproduce them. But uh, LMR made a 16 inch replica that's fantastic because you can run modern rubber. And uh, the 390 millimeter was basically about 15 and three quarter inches. Uh, so this is 16 inches. So it's just a slight little, um, you know, uh, plus one quarter <laughs> uh, sizing. And uh, we're running a 225 50 16 uh, Pirelli on it. So, um, and then the other thing that we did is I took and the car, from the factory they set up really high almost reminds me of my delorean they just kind of sit real high and even even higher in the front so uh from the tire rack i did order the mild lowering kit which if you look here absolutely nailed the ride height on this car and the stance um it just looks fantastic i didn't want anything aggressive i didn't want to slam it but to me that is a perfect perfect uh ride height for the car. I do have the original springs, you know, obviously to keep the car original, but I don't think there's any real harm in lowering it a little bit there for <laughs> aesthetics and, and handling. And uh, so I guess the, the teenage kid in me still can't leave a survivor alone, <laughs> but we'll go around the car here. Uh, and then I think uh, I put on a, uh, I think I put on a new muffler. I'll take a picture underneath there, but that's really about it on this car. Other than maintenance, the uh, wizard from Omega Auto Clinic rebuilt the carburetor and did some maintenance a couple years ago. And uh, actually, I've had this car for probably five years, and Hoovy did a car a video on this car um, way back when. Uh, you have to look it up. Uh, I'll put a link in the description there. But um, yeah, he did a video on this car years ago. And uh, so I'm finally kind of bringing it out and bringing it to the public. And it's, uh, like I said, this was special sentimental car, my, basically my first car uh, in high school. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna zoom in here. Now there's lots of patina on this car. I mean, these cars were not built with the highest quality. This is 1979, we're coming out of a really you know, late 70s, early 80s was a pretty rough time in the U.S. auto manufacturing. But and, but you'll see, you know, how original this car is because you'll see the plastics uh, fade a little bit different than the metal because, you know, the plastic bumper cover here and then your metal fender. But you'll see there's little bitty nicks and there's little chips and there's little imperfections. I'm not going to point out every little single thing. You know, you can kind of just look at the video and zoom in and, uh, um, you know, pause and freeze frame and do what you want to there. And you'll just kind of see the patina of the car. I'll kind of show you the bumper here. 
there and there's our headlights and our grill. Can I show you a little right? Now these fog lights uh, are something that somebody added in the period, but with the amber color, I think it really goes great with the car. So I think it's an appropriate 80s addition to the car. So coming across the front here. So you can see it's just very consistent wear and tear for a car from 1979 with 60,000 miles on it. The hood is in really good shape. This car, about a year ago, I did have a paint correction done on this and a ceramic coating. Uh, driven it a bit since then, so it might need a second round. But I gotta be really careful with this paint. It's, you know, it's old and, you know, probably not the, the thickest paint laid on from the factory, so you don't want to get too aggressive with it. But you can kind of see little touch-ups from the previous owner. I'm guessing that this was a uh, uh, adult purchased car when it was bought new, because I mean, that's just kind of the, you know, nothing was done to this car, it's bone stock. And uh, it's just probably one of those cars where they just took it out and drove it occasionally in the nice weather because it was purchased. So a dealer bought this car, I think it was like Sotheby's or, or one of the classic car uh, auctions. And uh, this was about five years ago and he had it on his website and I saw the car. I started looking and I was like, I wonder if I could find my original car um, or, you know, a, a 79 Capri RS Turbo. And uh, so I got to looking and there's nothing out there. They're all modified, chopped up. Everybody pulled out the four cylinder turbo motor and put in a V8 or just whatever. And, uh, you know, they blew it up and swapped it out. So surviving with the original four cylinder turbo motor is really amazing. So these wheels, you can see they're brand new. So there's no issues with the wheels. The tires are from 15. Uh, so, I mean, they're, they were, they're not, I didn't put them on that old. So they must've been a year or two old when I got them from the tire rack. But so they're still fresh and they're still good on the tires. I, just took this thing out of town last weekend. No issues there at all. So here is a little scratch on the mirror. Looking down the door here, some little touch-ups right there. A little touch-up above the handle. I just love the silver with the orange and red graphics. It's funny, the, the Capri Turbo RS uh, Facebook page that's their cover photo right there. I sent them the picture of that uh, emblem and that's their cover photo right there. I'll make a round underneath of the car after I cover the top side. It's it's a completely rust-free car. So look, they installed floor mats on it. There's some other little indicators of an adult uh, thinking process uh, on the inside of the car, I'll show you. So here is the roof. No hail on the car, no dents. The, uh, the seals are a little dry around the sunroof. I mean, the sunroof, they drain, so it doesn't actually seal anyway. But the, uh, so the seal around the edge of the sunroof is dried a little bit. And then the body seal is old too. Um, so it'd be nice to try to find some kind of replacement for the sunroof to body seal, but not causing any real issues. There's a little cell panel. And the neat thing, you know, the Capri was the European styled Mustang, um, you know, and I love it about that. I remember when I saw my Capri, see, check out the box flares. Only the Capri has the box flares. And I mean, that just totally, I mean, it reminds me like of an E30 M3, you know? It just, uh, it's just incredible. But so the Mustang didn't get any of that. It's, so it's interesting what they did with the Capri. It was the upscale Mustang. It was a European styled Mustang is what I call it. Got the, just the different, the horizontal bar grill and uh, the louvered tail lights. I'll show those to you here in a second. See, there's our tires there. These tires maybe have a thousand miles on them. Original mud flaps. There was one, is there a door ding? 
Couple little door dings down the side. Person could PDR on those. But like I said, I mean, the paint on the car, I think you just kind of leave this car alone just like it is. Just keep it nice. There's some little speckles here on the paint. A little touch up and some little speckles there. Has the original louvers on the back, heated back glass. Deckly looks good across the top, but you'll see where there's little, you know, splotchiness in the paint here and there. Just the age of the paint in the car. Show you the tail lights. There's a little, look like there was a scuff and they kind of touched it up a little bit on that hatch. There's the tail lights. These things are pretty much on obtainium <laughs> and they're in excellent condition. No issues with the tail lights. And when I did the muffler, uh, they actually re reproduced the factory little twin chrome tips for me. So they did a really good job of reproducing my factory because it had a, I forget what it was. It had a, uh, I think the tailpipe was rusted or something. So when I first got the car, had American muffler fix that up for me. your quarter panel the uh this is just some tar or something you know you could take some maybe solvent or something and maybe do some detailing on the bottom side of the car i really didn't get too aggressive with this car there's our wheels so the original trx wheels do come with this car and they have tires on them that have tread i mean they're old but for a car show or it's something i was trying to go for originality you know competition uh, then you could bolt the TRX wheels back on looking at the door here a few little touch-ups there's a door ding right there and I pan back a little bit it's our turbo RS an interesting thing about the so you're sitting here thinking so it's a 2.3 liter turbo four-cylinder engine which they used in a lot of vehicles um but then they <laughs> this is such a this is the early days folks it is a draw through uh turbo from the car you know the carburetor the turbo draws through from the carburetor the carburetor basically sits on top of the turbo so it's a pretty <laughs> early design what's interesting is they got 130 horsepower out of it um, that may not sound like a lot of power. This car really doesn't weigh very much, though. That was the great thing about the Fox bodies, and that's why they've been an iconic chassis, because drag racers and just, I mean, this everybody knows pretty much. I don't need to go into the Fox body <laughs> legacy. But, uh, but the interesting fact is the uh, 255 cubic inch V8 had 118 horsepower. So if you're crying about 130 horsepower, and here's kind of a factory scene right here. You can see that right there. Like I said, these cars were definitely not Mercedes quality, but you know, but they were, you know, they, if you think about the Mustang II and where that came from, I mean, this was a massive leap. And then in 79, you know, GM was still carrying the old Camaro and Firebird on the old chassis from the 70s, well, even the late 60s. So. This really was an all new forward thinking design and engineering. So Ford in the eighties really, really led the way in a lot of, uh, you know, pushing the technology forward. Let's go ahead and pop the hood on this guy. This thing runs perfect. When you first start the car, uh, you know, after it's been sitting, the, uh, you know, the oil, the turbo seals uh, get a little bit dry and hard. I'm going to, pause here for one second and open the hood all right we got the hood open kind of takes two hands there but uh so what i was going to say is the you know this is the original turbo so there's a little bit of a puff of oil smoke when you start it up just from the seals of the turbo when you shut the car off the little bit of oil seeps into the housing if you're familiar with turbo cars you understand what i'm talking about and uh it's not really an issue doesn't smoke at all once it just clears out that little pool of oil that seeps past the uh, turbo oil seals. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pause again and turn my light on. 
All right, got going again here. I'm gonna turn the light on here so we can see a little bit better in the engine bay, but, but check out this engine bay. It is completely original bone stock, all the vacuum lines, all the routing. Uh, this car had, you know, when it was new, uh, they did an undercoating on it and all these little black dots and specks you see are just kind of like over spray. They did it from underneath, but it kind of just, I guess, splashed up when they did the undercoating. Just something that they kind of did. You know, that true coat, that'll keep the salt off. <laughs> Anybody know the movie I'm referencing there? Drop it in the comments if you do. Yeah, you don't need that true coat. So I put uh, new plugs, wires, all that stuff on the car when I got it in. It's even got the original, the smog pump is even still there. We did put a new heater core in the car. Uh, when I got it, the heater core is bypassed, so uh, Wizard put a heater core in it. So it's got a new heater core. Looking around, I'll go ahead and uh, slide in here and fire it up for you. Let you hear what she sounds like. I'll tour the interior in a minute. Nice little buzzer there. This car, oh, there's our factory stereo. I'll turn that off there, don't wanna get copyrighted. But on this car, no matter how many months this car's been sitting, I hit the throttle pedal one time, set the choke, and it fires right up every time. And just runs absolutely perfect. Yeah. The car's been sitting for I don't know, about an hour. I guess we don't really... No smoke. But it does, it's occasionally, it does just puff, puff one little bitty puff of smoke on startup. And here we go. Runs just perfect. So here's the funny thing. I gotta show you this. Okay, so there's your exhaust manifold, and there's your exhaust pipe. It goes down under the transmission. <laughs> this is crazy. Under the transmission, routes up again behind the tranny, and then comes up, and there's the turbo right there. And then here's the carburetor sitting right on top of the turbo, or on top of the manifold. Manifold turbo set up there. Yep, there. So the exhaust has to come around and then and then go back down and out of the car. So pretty uh, pretty interesting setup. Hey, this really is the beginning of the uh, you know modern EcoBoost Mustang. You know this came along and then the uh, the turbo Mustangs and then they changed the turbo and then they went fuel injected and then the SVO came along with the uh, intercooler and. You know, they got that thing up to about 215 horsepower, I believe. I actually had the Unicorn SVO. I had a, uh, oh, hold on. I actually had the Unicorn SVO. I had an 85 and a half SVO Mustang with 40,000 miles on it. Kind of one that I wish I had never sold, but, uh, but anyway, just some interesting stuff about the engine. There's not much uh, tech under here and a lot, other than a lot of vacuum lines. So that being said, let's go ahead and take a tour of the interior. All right, let's take a tour of the interior. The interior is really, really cool on this car. Um, right, here is the door panel and we've got Capri RS. A little bit of a, uh, you know, a little bit of an indention in the foam there from your elbow. But other than that, though, the door panel is pretty much immaculate. Interesting, there's a lot of 79 Ole things on this car. And this door handle down in the bottom is a 79 Ole thing. So here's a cool shot to the interior. Check out the interior, kind of almost like a hound's tooth type of, of uh, deal here. The seats are in incredible condition. 
no wear on the bolster. The only issue with the seat is right here, we've got a little thread that's kind of come loose in that bottom seat right there. And uh, right there a little bit too. So, you know, just what you're gonna have happen from getting in and out of the car. Check out the steering wheel here. This is an interesting car. It's manual brakes, manual steering, manual windows, no AC. It's just a, a basic, you know, I guess a little hot rod of the day, but, <laughs> but it was just a basic car. Got some fuzz down here. So looking at the floor here, I actually found these floor mats. It was really hard to find. I was trying to find something that looked kind of period carpet, but I think I did a really good job on that floor mat. Looking underneath of it, it's absolutely perfect underneath the floor mats. You can see the wear on the pedals or the lack thereof. All original, no question on the mileage. Carpet is in excellent shape. Steering wheel is nice. Everything is still soft. The dash is soft. There's not a single crack in this dash, which is really phenomenal. Steering wheel, even like, see the rubber here, soft. That's not a horn. Here's the horn, actually. <laughs> kind of cool. What's really neat, though, is um, they really designed an incredible fresh air ventilation system in this car. So right here, you push that all the way in, you pull it half out and it blows on the floor and all the way out and it blows out this vent here. And it puts a lot of air through the car. I mean, a ton of air. And if you vent the sunroof, it even does a lot more because it'll kind of draw through. I'll tell you more stories about me and the history of the Capri when we go driving. But uh, you can see and then headrests go up and down. I kind of put them in the up position, kind of cool. And then here is the back seat. Pristine on the back seat. And the carpets, and it's funny, it's a fairly low grade carpet, nothing fancy on the carpet, but it is basically as it came out of the factory in 79. Uh, the back of the headliner uh, right here uh, dropped down a little bit. I'm, all I gotta do is pull that panel and uh, kind of tuck that headliner back up and put a little spot of glue on it. So I keep, I mean, it's been like that since I've had the car. I just, I don't really notice it until right now, but I'll kind of pull that back up there and tuck that up. I'm not gonna replace it. I mean, there's no way I'd replace it because look at that material, so cool. Would not replace that. Seat belts are in there. Let me slide in the car. All right. So right now we are at 64,073 miles. And uh, look at the uh, machine turn dashboard. So cool. Here's another thing when I talked about adult owned. Hey, look, here's our GPS of the period. <laughs> here's our navigation system. And uh, here's our digital onboard display. It's a little digital clock. The battery is long dead. I've never bothered to ch change it or whatever, but I left it on there, you know, it's just cause I don't know, just something just, just offers character and charm about it. AM FM stereo radio. Um, and it is stereo, no cassette or anything. There's the little switch for the fog lights. But looking across the instruments, just absolutely pristine. Look at the coloring, the color. It is just fantastic. No fading, turbocharged, Capri RS. And there's our passenger floor. Perfect there. We've got some original boosted power. 2.3 liter. <laughs> That's cool. A little uh, engine brochure right there. Comes with the car. That's a receipt or an invoice from something there. Here's our other little, and it's a fresh air vent for the driver and the passenger. And then the climate control, basically, here's our rear defrost. And then, you know, heat, floor, hot, cold. Heater will cook you out on this car. Works really, really good. There's our handbrake. A little plastic on the seat belt that actually just recently happened there. Getting a little bit brittle. Shifter boot is nice. See, the shift knob is nice. Four-speed manual transmission. Didn't come out with a five-speed, I think, until... 81, I think, maybe 80 or 81. So the visors are nice. Looks like it's got a little mirror in there. And there's our driver's side visor. And I do have the sunshade 
for the sunroof. It's in the trunk there, or in the hatch area. I'll show you that. Manual mirrors. Go ahead and roll around to the other side. Doors close nice and tight. Car drives really, really well. We'll talk about that when we drive it. Passenger side door panel. As meant as it could be. No issues with that. Again, we'll show you the dash here from another angle. Zero defects in the dash. It's pretty incredible. Here's our passenger seat and no flaws on the passenger seat. Pretty amazing, don't you think? Here is passenger floorboard. And just a shot of the dash and stuff from this angle. And another shot back here. <laughs> no back adjust or anything. It just it kind of reminds me of something from the 60s. You know, you just pull it forward. It doesn't even lock and there's no adjustment. Just forward to aft is the only adjustment that you get. Let me go ahead and show you all of our stickers here. Show you the VIN number. Forgot to show you that on the driver's side. There's that. Tough coat dyno. Back in the day. Alright, I will. So we got these little thumb wheels on the there's three, all, there's three of them there, two of them there, there, and then this one was missing, so we put a little nut on it just to make sure that something held it down. And we'll pop the hatch here. All right, so here is our sunroof uh, carrier, and inside of that is the uh, sunroof shade, which is, it's no, no issues with it, and it goes inside that cover. And then that seat folds down, uh, makes a really nice, I used to haul so much stuff. I mean, <laughs> you could just, you could sleep in the back of this car. It's amazing how much room there is in the back of this little car. So cool. Oh, and here's another amazing thing. The cardboard interior cover. Look, I mean, how many of these survived? It's press board. You know, if they got wet at all, they warped and just disintegrated. But look, even the interior hatch cover is in perfect condition all right so let's go ahead and just sneak peek underneath along the edges here so just kind of give you some views under the car and like I said there is no rust on this car and you can see that Dyna coat or whatever they called it angles pretty dry underneath boots are good on the rack see the new coil springs there Amazing how much of the paint on the motor is still surviving. You can kind of see the exhaust there. Kind of did a there, there's the split. See, so we did a, basically like a cat back new exhaust. So that's all new. Sounds really good. And you can see that floor pan. Absolutely no rust at all. All right, here comes my favorite part. Let's jump in this little guy and spin those hamsters and see how she runs. All right, we're strapped into the Capri. Let's fire it up and roll down the road. 
So like I said, I did put um, the lowering springs on. These are the original shocks. So, you know, the stock spring, obviously being taller and softer, those shocks were designed to work with those springs. The lowered spring, obviously, when you lower a spring, it's also a little bit stiffer spring rate. So right now the springs are a little uh, more powerful than the shocks. So the car could really benefit from some upgraded shocks. Uh, I haven't done that yet. It dries fine, but it does porpoise a little bit. And uh, the shocks are good. They're just not strong enough to deal with the uh, uh, to deal with the springs. So get a few degrees more on the temperature here. I'm driving it earlier, so it's not too too cold. But uh, yeah, me and the Capri go way back. Like I said, talking about the styling of the Capri. Um, when I was looking for a car in high school, the uh, um, probably hold it back so it don't bounce. There you go. Get more <laughs> absorption. When I was looking for a car in high school, you know, I didn't I didn't really have much of a budget, and so I was just kind of looking around, and I didn't know what kind of car I wanted. Um, I didn't really have much of a budget to buy a car, so I, I remember the first car I saw that I I saw. Hey, that's a cool car, and I I graduated high school from a little bitty town called Hillsboro, Kansas. My my graduating class was like 38 people. So it was a very small town. Um, and what I did for a job to buy my Capri is I milked cows. That's how I paid for my Capri. I got my own loan from the bank and then I milked cows to pay the loan back. Um, so the uh, so the first car I saw, I'm gonna go ahead. Ooh, their old turbo kicking in. So the first car I saw was a, a 74 260Z and it was green in color. And uh, so I saw that car is in our town and uh, I thought, well, that's a cool car. And, and so I called on it and uh, they wanted like $4,500 for that car. And I was like, well, this is the oldest car I've looked at. Why is it the most expensive? I didn't really understand classic cars, collector cars. I really didn't understand car values. But, uh, you know, but I thought it was really cool looking and it was like $4,500 and that was like way out of my budget. And I was driving through Newton, Kansas at, at a place called Tongish Auto Mart, which is actually still there. And uh, I ran into the, him at the auction uh, occasionally and uh, the same gentleman I bought my car from when I was 17 years old uh, is still there, which is really cool. And I told him, I was like, hey, I bought my first car from you like 35 years ago. How crazy is that? So anyway, I was driving through Newton and I saw this car and it was a dark green with like a lime green, uh, uh, yellowish and lime green graphics. I'll uh, drop a picture of my car in the, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pop a picture in right here. But this car was, um, I drove by and I just caught it by the corner of my eye and it was $1,400 and it had about 140,000 miles on it, you know? So it was just a, a used car and uh, and it was a base model RS, was not a turbo, no AC, black vinyl interior, did have a sunroof. And uh, so that car, I uh, uh, so I flipped around, I looked at that and I was like, well, something just really, I guess I, I always liked foreign, you know, I liked foreign, and European cars and the styling of that Mustang just caught my eye. You know, my first look was a foreign car, but I couldn't afford it. So I went and uh, got that got that car, bought it, and I drove the crap out of that car through high school. It, I called it the ATC Capri, the all-terrain Capri. Um, I mean, we took that thing to the lake. I mean, like I said, it had the tall suspension and I just punished that car. You could not kill that car. And uh, so, and the interesting thing is, uh, so then when I, I went into the army right out of high school, uh, basically I left, you know, graduated high school and left for the army in June of 1987. And uh, so I left uh, the car with my uh, girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife, uh, Becky, and I let her drive it. She was a uh, freshman in high school and I was a senior. And that's when we started dating. So we've been married. We just celebrated like um, 32 years, 30, 31. Oh, I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> but, uh, um, but I mean, we were together years before that. So we've been together for a while. Love you, babe.
<laughs> so uh, I let her drive that car. She drove it through high school, and then and then when I got out of the army, uh, I got it back from her, and she bought an Opel GT as her first car. And worked at the pizza had to pay for that. So uh, the uh, <laughs> so I got it back. And the interesting thing is I got. Uh, somebody uh, backed into the quarter panel. I paid 1400 for the car, so I backed in the quarter panel. I got an insurance check for $800 and then continued to drive that car and then sold it for $800 like five years later. So that was really quite the car. I rebuilt the motor in shop class. So just, man, these cars are really nostalgic for me. So let's, let's, let's let the car talk a minute. Not bad, that's pretty good. Woo, here's our favorite little turn. Hang on, Polo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, this is so much fun, so much fun. Well, we're gonna take a short little break here and I'm gonna give you some uh, little drive-by shots right here and we'll pop that in the video. And then we'll pick up the commentary. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed those little flyby shots. We're back in the car here, kind of racing the sunlight, but this is kind of a nice time of, uh, of the year to take these uh, classic cars out there. It's nice. It's April, but it got a little bit of a cold spell today, so it's uh, actually only like in the high 40s or low 50s, but little turbo motors uh, liking that, actually. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, kind of some of my history with the Capri and some of the fun stuff you know, and what the Capri means to me. And uh, so this car is like, it's been on my website. I, I uh, if somebody actually called to buy the car, um, I'm not exactly 100% sure how I would react. I've been known to mark cars sold before. Uh, if I get somebody too serious and I'll, uh, they ask if it's available and uh, there's been times where I've said that it is sold and uh, pulled it off the website. <laughs> Sorry, but this one's up there right now for the moment. And uh, I'm not sure, I don't really, not in any hurry to sell this uh, guy. But talking a little bit about the car, I mean, you know, there's not a lot to not work on the car, but uh, mechanically it's great. Brakes, clutch, suspension, I kind of told you about the, uh, the shocks and stuff, but steering, um, it's just a great car, really. No issues. This car, no matter how long it sits, it starts every time. Never had this car not start. Never been dead or anything like that. You pump the gas two times, set the clutch, or set the choke, and it just goes fine. But uh, four-speed manual transmission, um, you know, at least a little bit to be desired. Basically, it's like three-speed with, with an overdrive. There's a big gap between third and fourth, but... It is what it is, you know? It's just something, this is, car is not about, at this stage, this car, it's not about performance. It's about nostalgia, um, you know, and just, just the survivability of this car. Um, the fact that this car exists is what's so cool to me. And, uh, but yeah, I just, it just runs like a top. I would get in this car and drive it, uh, drive it anywhere, to be honest with you. Um, if somebody from, halfway across the country called and said hey you know can I fly in and drive it back I'd be like with the caveat of it's an old car anything can happen I mean you could buy a new car and it can break down but uh, would I be afraid to drive this car no I'd drive it anywhere uh, I've put I don't know I may have put maybe a thousand miles on this car since I've had it I'll have to look at the odometer from when I first got it right now like I said it's 64,077 miles so but just wanted to take you for a trip uh, and a tour, trip down memory lane for me, nostalgia, and a tour of my 1979 Capri RS Turbo. I appreciate you guys as always. Uh, it's, it's kind of fun bringing my little special personal cars to you. And uh, you know, like, and, like and subscribe on the channel, I appreciate that. Uh, 
hit the notifications that way when we load up a new car you'll be the first to be notified because you never know when we might have your next dream car have a great day and happy motoring